Yo, what it do? Yo, this your boy Gelly Gel, and I know it's been a while, right? It's 2022, and um, yeah, man, I've been kind of dormant for a minute, really busy in some other spaces, um, doing some other things, but I was like, yo, I got to get dedicated, I got to get uh, back to going live and recording, and so one of the things I decided to do is jump on this um, one, grow your YouTube one, with 1,000 uh, subscribers, and so I got on this challenge, and I was like, all right, let's get it, let's go, and so one of the challenges for today um, is to actually do a recording um, of your first video. And so, you know, I'm kind of a perfectionist. And I was like, yo, I got to have all my pieces and all everything laid out and ready to go in order to do it. But one of the challenges was was just grab what you got, hit record and make it happen. And so I was like, all right, bam, let's get it. Let's go. I'm going to do the damn thing. Right. And so um, so today I'm going to sit here real quick. And one of the things I've been doing is recording um or really designing uh, Instagram stories and reels instead of using Canva. I use Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, Premiere Pro. And so a couple of friends of mine was like, yo, Gail, why don't you do, why don't you just do that, right? And so I was like, all right, cool. Um, and since I'm so comfortable going live, like I figure, you know, that's my line is blank blanket right now. So I'm just gonna hit the live button and start this journey, right? So realistically, I'm gonna cut, I'm, I'm not gonna edit because I think one of the challenges is not to edit, um, but I am gonna cut this part off and just go through the tutorial part of it and then upload it to YouTube later on the day. Um, so I'm going to run this exactly as is. Uh, so you'll get the bloopers and the flubbers. Um, it's, I, I kind of mini scripted it out. Um, and so we're going to do the darn thing. So, I mean, you can sit here with me if you want. I appreciate it. I might take uh, respond to comments if you got questions. I'll probably do it later. But honestly, this is just um, me being silly, me being me. Um, and going to jump in here. So again, I'm going to use Photoshop. I'm going to use Premiere Pro. And this is the start of uh, my first day challenge or first Saturday challenge, whatever we're doing uh, for grow uh, with video um, for the 1000 YouTube challenge with Think Media. Uh, and so let's jump in this bad boy, right? So the other part is my guy, my guy, um, my, my guy, DJ Deuce, because I use the ATM mini for a little bit of everything. And he was like, yo, Gail, you need to, um, you, sh you should do an ATM. Like, why do you use it? Why is it relevant? How does it work in your workflow and all that fun stuff? And I was like, man, that's a super long video, but I am using the ATM today. Um, right now I'm actually recording with my C100, which is kind of overkill for a lot of people, but it's the camera I got to sit in front of me and they said, don't swap it out. Um, and so, uh, you know, you'll see that process. So one of the things I'm going to do as I start this journey is you'll see my CCC, whatever. Yeah. My common conversations, uh, podcast, um, emblem up there. And I thought, man, if, you know, I really need to put the photography or the marketing business, um, logo up there in the top. Right. So we're going to get started doing that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into Photoshop. I'm going to show you how I just go ahead real quick and take my top or a lower third and export it into the ATM. I don't even have to touch the ATM mini. Now, I will warn everybody that I have partially already started a lot of this process. Um, and so, you know, it might take you a little a little time to prep what you're going to do. Um, but. Here we go. Right. So let me do this because I'm also testing something. I'm using a hyperdeck to record this session um, just so, it, you know, I have a high speed playback and I'll show you. I plan to do a tutorial on how to record and do playback almost immediately. But that's a that's something I do for churches and live events. Um, but here we go. So ready. Let's jump into Photoshop real fast. I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm gonna throw my little lower third. I mean, my little uh, div down at the bottom. So you're see, you're actually seeing my screen. It looks a little yellow. Uh, well, we'll just live with that because I'm not supposed to fix it. Right. And so what you're seeing up here at the top right is is my uh, my cc logo so i want to go in here you'll see it on my photoshop i popped it up in here but i already went ahead and threw my photography logo at the top right so it's just a quick png this is uh 1920 by 1080 because i'm that's what i'm recording at and so all you got to do real quick is if you throw your logo in here you go up to file um and where's my export export right there boom we're gonna go export you can export it as a png but i'm already gonna do that so i can export it directly to um the atm switcher media pool which is super dope if you've got all that connected and you can see where the ip address is I can actually open this little drop down right here and it's going to show me that I have slot one all empty. So I can automatically assign it there. You saw a list of other stuff that I already had in that place. Um, like you could drop it. Right. So I'm just going to hit export. Boom. That's going to be there. And at some point. So now I'm going to go back down to my ATM. Right. And I am going to change that um, real fast. So all I have to do is go to my media player, slide up. Boom. 
hit that and you're going to see now the f5 photography by miguel h logo in the top right hand corner so we just real quick swap that out um and boom done and dead right so all right so let's get into the tutorial so this is what i normally do when folks are asking me i'm just going to jump over here to my other tab right and so when people are always asking me yo miguel you know when you're when you're you're tweaking stuff for clients and you're making ig stories you know i normally have a backdrop or i'll do some like glassy and blur kind of style piece and then a little picture over top so you don't have all this extra negative space because if you're in ig you automatically know um they're you're going to throw kind of some kind of granulated color that automatically matches to some style of what you're doing. Um, so here we go. So what I did is I just went out and said, man, boom, I'm going to grab one of my favorite pictures. This is actually a banner that's in my wall. One of my favorite models. Her name is Kesley Morefield. Y'all should check her out on IG. Um, but we do, we used to do it. Well, actually, we still kind of do a lot of work and we're tweaking out some things to see what we're going to do in 2022. But um, we've got a lot of published work out there in the world. And so what I want to stop start with is a backdrop um, that is just this. It's so I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna show you the image size, right? So you, if you go up to image in your banner, you hit image size and it will pop up. See, I'm running multiple screens. So let me pull this up here so you can see it, right? And so the width is 1080 by 1920. So all I'm doing is reversing the size. Normally it's 1920 by 1080, but if you do 1080 by 1920, you get this vertical setup that will work as a reel or in, in or as a story, right? So that's an Instagram. That's pretty much in anything that's running stories right now. All right, so one of the things I do know I want is I want to be able to have um, my actual footage down here. So whether I'm going to use a video or I'm going to use a still image, I know that I want in this space my 1920 by 1080 footage to drop in there. Um, and so realistically, you can size and do a few things. So one of the things I use is the marquee tool. Um, the other thing I want typically in this scenario, this is for this particular template, is I'm gonna run some logos across the top here and across the bottom here. And I may even have some different colors showing, right? So this right now is gonna be my background. And you're seeing over here to the right-hand side, different projects that I was already working on. And before I decided today, which one I wanted to do, this is what it is. So I'm gonna show you, right? So go ahead, you grab that, you go up here, left-hand side on that panel, grab your square, your rectangle marquee tool. And I already have, my guides already kind of laid out, right? And you can do this a couple of ways. Because this image is coming in as a smart object, uh, that way I can take it in a raw or light room and make some edits if I choose to. Um, you can, right? We can use, um, oops, I didn't mean to do that. We can use the mask tool. Let me delete that. See, I told you he was going to watch it and watch me make mistakes. You can use the mask tool, right, if you don't want to um, damage this product or damage this particular photo. You want to kind of edit in a way that it won't harm it, right? So let me go ahead and I'm going to create my mask first, right? It's going to be white to reveal black. So here we go, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and hit delete black on there because I want to create that and open it up. And if you'll notice on the right, on the left hand side, right, that black strip right there, I can always paint that back in if I want, but that's not this tutorial. So this is a real quick one. Boom. I want to already know I'm going to place stuff right there. And because I've already kind of created this graphic and I know where I want to drop it, right? So maybe you want your footage to fall right here, right? So the eyes are there and you can scale this out um, 1080 by whatever, whatever that ratio is. And I've already done it because I wasn't going to sit here and do the math with you. Um, all right. So maybe you want to drop it there. or Maybe you want to drop it above the eye. So what I went ahead and I'm going to close that on and boom. So I went ahead and already dropped it and cropped out the area that I want my video to fall in. Um, and then what you can do is just quickly go ahead and grab, right? Let's say you grab your logos and you go ahead and import them in a Photoshop. You throw them up across the top. And if you notice, I've already done mine. You can scale it out the way you want. And here's my lower one. So my CC, right? My podcast is at the top, at the bottom. My regular logo is at the top. And now I have a really quick, easy background. Um, and if you notice, this takes a couple of minutes. I got a real quick, easy background that I can now drop in the Premiere Pro. So I can save this, right? I can export this. And I've already done this, you good people. You go up to export. You can do quick export as a PNG. Save it wherever you're going to save your work at, and you're good to go. So now, one of the other things before I jump into Premiere Pro, if you want to add a white background, right, or some other color background, um, because you don't want the transparencies to be in these spaces. Well, one of the things you can do is go ahead. 
right? I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on. Let's say I want it to be black, right? right? Or if I want it to be orange, I want it to be yellow. I'm just going to go ahead and create another layer, copy that layer down there. But for now, I'm going to keep it just like this. And I've already saved it, like I said. So now I'm going to just jump over to Premiere Pro real fast. Boom. Um, and usually what you're going to do is you're going to go new project, right? Start a new project, find your save point. Um, and then you're going to drag all your assets over to Premiere Pro. So what you do, right, is you go up the file, you're going to go in the import, right? And for me, I have it on a thumb drive and it's just called YouTube post for the day. And I believe it is all these different, um, folders that I'm going to be using for particular projects, right? So I like to stay, I, I tend to like to stay somewhat organized in this process, uh, just, just to keep my mind at ease, right? So we're going to build this out because I today I was like, okay, let's just figure out how we're going to do it. Um, so in order to get this framework in, the cool part is, is if you, if you're, if the size of the images that you're already bringing in, um, you don't have to worry about it um, and changing in terms of changing your your sequences. But if you had to, you can just come up to sequence sequence settings. Um, and hypothetically, let's say this was at um, 1920 by 1080, you could just come in here and change your frame size right there of your video and be one and done, right? And it's gonna give you this layout. It's the same thing if you were doing a post for Square. And I'll probably do that for another video. So what I'm doing, I already got my KM vertical laid out, right? I'm going to go ahead and drag it down here to, well, maybe I'm not going to drag it anywhere because she doesn't want to work. Let's try this again. No content. Um, so am I missing her? Let's go to, I, oh, you know what? It's because I move stuff around. Sorry, good people. Here it is. Right. Boom. There's an image. Um, Black is showing up because I know that is transparent and it's going to be whatever color that's coming around the side. So I just drugged it. So if you want to make this part of your time, right, let's say you want it three minutes, 20 minutes, five minutes, you want it one minute. You can really just kind of move this back and forth um, within your timeline uh, to make it work. Or you can click it and right click and go down and go to speed duration and change it right here. So right now it says 59.04 seconds, right? So I'm just gonna leave it the way it is um, for now. So now what you've seen is me, you, you saw the Photoshop piece where I did the design. We just dropped it in here, we imported it in. And here's some different pieces. So let's say I wanna throw some music in there because I, I have some music that I can drop in there. I'm just gonna drag it, drop down to the timeline. Um, and this track apparently is roughly, what, about four minutes long or something like that. So, you know, I can, I can just shrink it just, for giggles we're gonna make that happen for today but here's the thing i want to drop a video or i want to drop some still image in, in here and so i'm gonna do this with us real fast y'all bear with me so i have a whole bunch of still images um of a proof um, one of the models that i work with her name is stacey and so i'm gonna i'm actually gonna cheat here and we're gonna use hers and i'm just gonna drag a handful of the images down in here into this space right and you can see exactly where it falls um and somewhat because i've already done some sizing but you can see where there's some black um coming through on this top so all i have to do if i is go over to the effects controls go up here to positioning and or scale. And I'm just going to scale. I'm just going to scale this, right? Make sure I'm clicked on that image. And I'm just going to scale this up just a little bit. Until I get it to where I want it, right? And so, boom. So I've got this and I've got this one reel and I'm just going to hit play real fast and you see how it's gone, right? So we've got our music. We've got our, our image there. So let's go ahead and grab a handful of other images um, in this space and see how we can build this out. Real quick. So here, while I'm doing this, I wanna to listen to some music because it's quiet. All right. Boom. And when I finish this, actually, this would probably be the part that I scrap and edit and just kind of really kind of speed ramp through it. So no one has to sit here and watch me do this for like 15 or 20 minutes. It does take some time um, to really sit down and make these videos work. Right. But it doesn't. If you notice, it's not taking me a whole lot of time. And, and a lot of this has to do with just some pre-planning. So, again, I, I see where I'm going to cut off at. I'm just going to highlight that top um, layer and that bottom layer and scoot it over. Um, Boom. So we know we've got the same time, right? 
So I'm going to kill this music real quick. So realistically, watch. If I just run through this real fast, we're watching all these images as they scroll through, right? So that's my quick reel. Um, but let's say I want this to play really, really fast. So um, hypothetically, this is a minute long. Let's give it a run through. You ready? So maybe I want this to run faster. Maybe I want this to run slower. There are so many different things that you can do with this. Um, right. So let's let's hypothetically say I want to speed this up. I want this to play way faster. Maybe I only want it to use it as a story, which means I want this to run at about 15 seconds. Right. So each one of these clips have to be 15 seconds. So what I'm going to do real quick is just go through and make sure that they're all at the correct size. So let me go back up here. Let me go back to my effects control. And I know on this one, it is 108. So I'm just gonna go through and hit 108 on this one. Boom, type that in. And so I know that's gonna be at scale. I'm gonna hit this next one. Let's take a look at that, right? And so 108, um, there are faster ways to do this, but for a tutorial, this figure step-by-step. Step. So I'm looking at this one and I know what I, what I know is that this is actually a vertical shot, right? So if I turn that off, that's really what I'm looking at in that shot. So I want to decide how much or how little of the image I want in there. So one of the things I realized too is that since it's a vertical shot, I have all this horizontal space in here. Um, and there are some really cool, and I will do this probably in another tutorial, but a, some really cool things that you can do um, to fill that space. You could you could use some zoom. Uh, you could do some auto zooming in and out. But here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to grab the next image over, right? And I'm going to put that in the same frame um, like that, right? But realizing now she's on top of my background. So I'm pull it back down. Boom. All right. Let's do this real quick. And then let's see where this image is. And I want to scale it down. All right. So boom, scale it down. And then I'm just going to slide it over from my positions left to right. Right. Uh, left to right is boom. And so I realized I got a little bit of black room and maybe that's a good creative way to keep this. Um, Again, you get to play with it and decide how you want to do it for yourself to make it work. I'm just going to use the guides here real quick. Uh, again, this is just a quick tutorial for the grow with a video uh, 1000 subscriber challenge with the Think Media and Sean Kennel um, that we've been doing all week. Right. So I want to run this like this. Right. I'm going to pull that back down. And so I know. Boom. Right. So apparently I have two verticals and I'm going to slide them over like this again. So I want my two top vertical positions to be 817. So I'm just going to go ahead and go up here real quick and just go eight. So and right. That does help. Boom. 817. Let's just make sure over to that position. Yes, it did. I know my bottom one is at 281. So I'm going to I want that to be my 281 position and size wise i know that both of these are about 46 to 47 um in terms of their scale so i'm just going to go ahead and hit 46 that's 26 gotta be gotta know what button so typing does help um and so i'm going to hit that one right there as well Boom, 46. now we're done right and so you know, you can scale them up a little bit more. You can make it smaller, bigger. That's really your choice. So, I mean, as you, as you look at how you want your images to fall in, again, this is just a quick tutorial to see how we can create our own IG positions, right? So, boom, now I got that. That automatically shrinks um, what we're creating here. So, let's just run through it again real fast. Ready? Let's just, let's see what happens. So pretty clean, no transitions um, yet. So I could add some transitions if I wanted to to this, um, which is going to add a little bit of flair. Um, but now I'm getting into those other, those backside of those images. And let's take a look, right, at what we can do because those are really big, right? So let's, I'm going to hide again that top layer again. And let's see where this falls at. And so that's a vertical image. And that's another vertical image. And then so we go back to, um, two horizontal images. So let's do this, right? We're going to grab and take that. And I'm gonna just going to slide this over. I just want to change it around all together, right? So we're going to keep that right there where it is. And 
I didn't mean to do that. So I'm going to slide these over. Drop it right there. Ripple delete that real quick. Um, yeah, cool thing about Ripple delete is it actually moves your entire timeline over so you don't have to keep grabbing stuff. Um, but that might be another tutorial as well, right? So, okay, cool. Playing that, that is there. Now, if I remember right, right here, I had these at about 46 and my top shot um, was at 802 on the position. So we're just going to go ahead and change that real quick. Boom. And I'm going to go ahead and rescale that to a little less than half and my bottom is at 46 and 281. So again, just gonna type that in. Boom. And I'll add at about 46. All right. All right. Let's turn that on and see where that falls in there. Okay. Pretty even. Uh, looks pretty good right now. And so, boom, we're gonna just run through this again. And I'm realizing that I got a little bit of black on that. So let's move that. What was that? That was 108. And so that's 100. And boom, 108. And just changing that over there at the scale again. And so we can just run this. Boom. Um, I'm kind of feeling this right now. And I'm gonna shrink this down even even more, right? And so let's let's run it. Pretty sleek and clean. I am gonna do something really different, only because as I'm watching this, and this is just me. Um, I am never, never happy. I'm always playing with stuff, and so as I was creating this this idea of doing this, um, I completely created something else just for the tutorial. Um, but apparently, as I'm doing this, I'm doing something different. So I, I want to do this real quick. So I'm, I'm loving where this is going. It's pretty slick. Um, I'm going to show you something else as we go along this journey, right? So we created the background in uh, Photoshop. I don't really think the, the background matches anymore. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just delete this from the timeline. You can do that. It will not affect um, what's in your bin over here. It just deletes it from the timeline. So if I wanted to go back and get it, I could grab it and pull it back in. But one of the things I do like, I like how this is set up and I can live with this. This is going to work for me um, and it might work for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this real quick. I'm just going to hold the alt button down, um, grab it and pull it up. Right. So I'm going to duplicate this uh, and I'm going to turn one of these into my background. The other one's going to be my foreground. And then ultimately what I'm going to do is also make this faster. So I'm going to make this a sequence real fast. Uh, so it's by itself. And then I'm going to turn it because I want to edit it as one group. I'm going to call this my BG group, my BG um, group. I don't learn how to type. Um, definitely when people are watching you. All right. So boom. That way I can edit this whole this whole strip right here without um, affecting any of the videos. Right. So one of the things I want to do, I'm going to go back up to my effects. Not my effects, excuse me. My effect control. And I'm just going to make everything bigger. Ready? So I'm just going to keep making it bigger till it fills up the whole frame. Boom, that's done. Then I'm going to add an Aglassian blur to it real fast, right? Because I don't really, I don't want that to be the most important thing. So I'm just going to go up here and I'm going to type in blur. So let me go back and do this again. So if you go up to effects, into the search bar, type in blur. If you scroll down, you'll get some different options like right here, blur, sharpen, directional blur. I'm just going to grab the glass and blur, put my marquee on there and drag it over there to the footage. It's there. Now, if I go back to my control effects panels, it's going to be right here in the glass and blur, blur on the left hand side. Right. And if I click down on that arrow key right there in the corner, I can then slide this over and decide how much or how little blur I can use or I want to use. So I'm just going to go with this right here. Ta-da. Um, I think that's good enough. That's going to work for me. I'm good. Uh, so boom. So here it is. Only challenge we're running into is this is now sitting on top of all my main footage. And because remember the graphic that we put in there, we had cut out elements so they could sit on top, right? Um, so now we just want to switch this around. But before I do that, I'm going to nest this too, right? So I can make one edit on the full strip without messing up my layout. And I'm just going to call this main changes. IMG. That works for me. I don't have to spell. Uh, boom. All right. And then I'm going to drag this to the top. I'm drag both my timelines to the base. And if you notice what just happened, as soon as I drag my main to the top, I'll just turn it off, right? I put the blur on the bottom. 
I put my main images on top. And now I'm going to run this in sequence. And they're going to rotate together, right? But here's the thing. I want it to be faster. I feel like it's a little too slow. Um, so here's what I'm going to do real quick. I don't want to affect the music. I'm going to keep the music exactly where it's at, right? And I'm just going to come up in here. I'm going to go speed duration. And let's make this, let's just see what happens if I make this 50. Yeah, right. We're just going to lock that in there. You ready? Let's get it. So that whole thing's going to run for 15 seconds. Man, I'm going to live with that. It's pretty cool. I don't even mind the black strip that's going down the middle. So I'm just saying this is some really crazy creative ways that you can come in here um, and make I, your IG stories, your IG reels. You can do really whatever you want. So this is me doing it on the fly, you know, some pre-prep. Um, but if you spent some time and actually prepped to make this happen, this would be um, completely different and you can perfect it later. So here's one thing I do want to do real quick, right? I want to throw a quick transition on here and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time doing it, but I want to just put a transition on um, my top, my top layer. So I can go over to effects at the top of here and I can go down to video transitions and I can find something I want. I typically love dissolve. Um, you could just, you can do a cross dissolve, dip to black, um, we can do an additive dissolve. And so I'm just going to throw something on there and let's see what happens. Might not let me, um, because I forget we're in a nested position. I can also go up to, so I can come in and I can double click this. That's going to take me into each one of those layers. And I can just drop this one here, um, as I use the cross dissolve, right? The other cool part I could do with this, um, is if I wanted to cheat and throw, not nah, just use a different. So I'm going to go grab, it won't let me. All right, there we go. There we go. Add it dissolve. Let's just see what happens. I'm going to live with this. I'm about to wrap this video up. You guys have, you're watching it. I appreciate it. You've got the gist. Um, I'm just going to hit save. I'm going to go back over here to my timeline and watch what happens. Ready? Boom. So instead of it just jumping from one thing to another, it's really quick, really subtle. You could add some other story or some other sounds and effects and things like that to it. You can see how things kind of slide in and out. You can even control how fast or slow the cross dissolve goes in. But here's the baseline. This is the story. This is it. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed it. I'm going to wrap this up and probably plan some more of these uh, a little bit more in depth, maybe take a little bit more time uh, to show you step by step. But watch it again. If you liked it, subscribe. This is my journey to um, getting more on YouTube, showing more tutorials on YouTube, just the stuff that I do on a day to day basis. I am a videographer, photographer. Uh, my name is Miguel. I have a podcast called Common Conversations. I appreciate you for hanging out with me. Yo, like, subscribe, hit that bell if you want to learn more or, and even send me some comments, things that you might want to learn. Again, some of the tools that we use today was realistically the ATM Mini, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, and this was a quick tutorial on how to create your own background and foregrounds in your videos for IG and your reels or in your stories. Yo, holla at your boy. Thank you.